Hi, I'm Dave the RPA Guy, and in this video we'll be going over the conversion functions in Blue Prism. We won't get through all of them, we'll go through about half, which you can see over there next to me is about what we get through in this video, and this will be part one. Then I'll be making a part two video, which I'll be posting right after this one. Be sure to look for a link to part two at the end of this video. What I've done is I've laid out note stages that have the name of each of the functions that we intend to use. Let me go ahead and grab a calculation stage. We'll drop it on here. And my intention is to use the to date function. So I'll just name it to date for now. And I'm going to select conversion group click on to date and it says convert a value to a date and so I'm gonna pick a random date here 5 1 2017 we're gonna paste that into the expression field and this is a properly formatted to date function with its input inside the parentheses I'll show you in just a minute here that you don't have to hard code this but I'll do it like this for now just to show you the point now that we have our function here with our text input that is hard coded as a date of converting May 1st 2017 into a date we need to be able to put that somewhere so I'm going to click OK drag a data item over here I'm gonna select data type date let's make sure that we are putting the result into what we just created data one and we'll go ahead and connect it in with our link I'm gonna reset and let's step in we'll link one more time so we don't get an error what we did was we got May 1st, 2017. Now the data looks the same, but we can see here that this is a data type of date, which means that it casted from one data type to another. It was text and now it's a date. It looks pretty simple, right? We can go a step further with this and we can actually create a calculation that will take an input from a data item. Let's change this. Instead of this taking a hard-coded text data item, let's take from a text data item called data2 and we'll put into data3. Now we haven't created either of those yet and that's what we're going to do now. Let me just create those. We've got data2 which we're going to make a text data item and we'll put a date in there. We'll do 5-2-2017 just so we see a different date and then I'm going to copy this, paste, change to data3 and then I don't want the initial value but I do want this to be a date data item. I'll connect my next calculation stage in to date from input. Let's run this now and then see what it does. First function, second function. All right, so we got our date. It's not too exciting. It looks like the same thing. But in this case, what we did was we took an input from data two and we did an output to data three and at the same time what we did was casting because this was a text data item and this was a date data item the next thing we'll do is use to date time I'm gonna drag a calculation stage on here find the to date time conversion and read says converts a value to a date time in this case I'm going to type a similar date I'll increment it by one day we'll do May 3rd 2017 and we want a time as well 324 p.m. We're on our fourth data item, so I'll just name it data4. I'll create a data item called oh, well, data4, data and then we will make this a date time. Now we would expect an error if this data inside of here is not correctly formatted. Let me rename this to to date time. The name of it's not important. I'm just naming it so that I can tell what's going on in each of these. All right, let's connect this in here so we don't get an error when we run it. And this time, instead of stepping through like we were, I'm actually going to right click on here, run to this stage. And what you'll see happen is we will start on the main page because all running of the process starts from the main pages start stage. That's what happens whenever I click play here or when I right click and do run to this stage, it's going to jump back to the main page to start from there. All right, our first function, first function the second time, now our second function, and it ran to the stage that I told it to. So it looks like what we got out of that to date time function is we got a date like we expect with a space and then a time that includes the seconds. So what I could have done was added the seconds in there, but what we can see is it doesn't throw an error if we don't provide it the seconds. It assumes zero, zero for the seconds. We also saw PM. Let's do this two more times. 
the first time we'll do this, I'm just going to copy to date time here and add from input. Okay, so we will we will do the same thing we did before where now we'll start using inputs and probably for the rest of the time we'll use inputs. We'll call this data 5 and are we still putting in a data 4? No, we're going to put into data 6 now. Drag data 5 to here and I'm naming it data 1, data 2, data 3 because I know Blue Prism when I when I pull a data item off of this sidebar here, it's gonna automatically name it data one, then data two, then data three. And so it just makes it easier for me. I would normally name it in a way that makes more sense. We're going to pull from a text data type and we're gonna put an initial value of the same thing we had before, except this time let's add in some seconds. What's the other thing we want to do? We wanna add in the, in, we've already got data five here, which actually I made a mistake there. I've gotta make sure I have brackets around data five so it's recognized as a data item. Okay, and then we also need to create data six. And this one will be our date time data type. So this is actually from input and includes seconds. Let's run to this point. I'm gonna reset, right click on where I want it to run to, click run to this stage, and let's see, it'll run through all of these functions we've done already. And one thing you'll notice there that I did is I, I changed something while we were running the test. That's something that's really fantastic in Blue Prism is you can just, you can change things around. I can pause it, change the data in one of these and then keep running it and I don't have to restart the test. So it looks like what we got out of this was exactly what we wanted. In this case, it's actually a date time data type and we've got May 3rd, 2017 at 324 and 23 seconds PM. Now the final test we wanna run here to make sure that we know how to use this function, I'm just gonna move these down and we'll keep moving down with it, is I'm gonna take this, copy the, the calculation stage, and then this is gonna be two date time. But the difference is here we're gonna call this two date time 24 hour clock. Because as you can see, these date times take a time that is apparently on a 12 hour clock because it has AM and PM in it. Or did it do that because I told it to in the input? Let's find out. What did we work with before? We have data five and data six. Now we'll work with pulling from data seven and putting into data eight. Data seven, we want to be text. I'm gonna put this into the initial value and we need to force it to choose AM or PM. I'm going to put 15, 24, and 23 seconds. Let's see if this comes out to 324 or if it puts 15, 24 into this date time data item that we're putting on the page now. Date time, here we go, let's connect this in. And this time I'm gonna reset but instead of going to the main page like we've been doing, if I were to click run, it would run from the main page. I'm gonna push pause, reset, and instead of right clicking where I want the stage to go, I can do run to the stage. On the start stage here, the page I wanna run on, I'm gonna right click and say, set next stage. What this does is it bypasses anything that would have happened before that. In my case, I don't need anything to run on the main page in order to perform this test. So I right clicked, set next stage, and then I'm gonna pair that with right clicking where I want it to go and doing run to this stage. Okay, it's giving us our data. Everything's still looking good. And here's what we want to see. Look at that. Looks like it gave us May 3rd, 2017, 324 p.m., even though I gave it 1524. So that means that it conforms to what the date time data type is here for Blue Prism. Here in this Blue Prism tutorial about conversion functions, we have finished about the first half of those functions. If you have enjoyed the video, go ahead and like, leave a comment, and then join me in the next video by clicking that link that should be up there for part two.